Today I'm taking you guys along for my first 50 rounds through my Generation 4 Glock 23. Now I've got it loaded with Winchester Train and Defend, their full metal jacket line. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you here in Alaska, or at least in my area, Sportsman's had them for like 12 bucks for the 50 round boxes. For Brass Case 40, that's a killer deal. Even for Steel Case 40, that can be a killer deal. So, uh, of course I stepped on that one, but... Uh, anyways, this is the first 50 rounds uh, through this gun, and I haven't shot a 23 in a while. It was uh, last year that I actually shot one, and I actually, uh, at the time when I shot it, I was shooting, so we, I traded guns with somebody because he wanted me to shoot his 23, and I don't remember what generation it was. I don't think I even cared, but he, it had some modifications like the trigger or something like that, and I just remember that it seemed to have a tad less recoil than my uh, than my Beretta 96A1 at the time, but I was using my reloads. He had factory loaded ammunition, so my stuff typically is a bit hotter than factory ammo. So I'm going to get to see how this thing works with 180 grain ammo first off, and then obviously factory uh, factory ammo, because from the looks of it, this has got a slightly wider flat tip than. Uh, Slightly, slightly wider uh, mouth than uh, my reloads. My reloads are pretty pointed. Uh, they're 165 grain too, so you know it is what it is. But let's go ahead and uh, get to shooting. This is a a, a 6004 uh, a Safariland SLS. So it's a classic one. Push down and rotate the hood forward, and so that's all it is. So I got to remember to lock the hood every time. But it's a nice classic design pretty durable and I got it for a really good deal online obviously the Glock holster you can find everything for Glock online so let's see the first 50 rounds of my betrayal so that second round hit me in the face <laughs> Actually, it came back and I got a little peppering to the face. And I'm about seven yards from my target right now, but wow, that looks like a shotgun pattern. That is horrible. But I've been practicing, but my forearm is honestly worn out. This is actually supposed to be a rest day for me to give my forearms a rest. So, anyways, I'll try to dial it in and, you know, uh, get situated with this thing because I need a good idea of how the recoil feels. With factory ammo, it seems to be pretty mellow. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a go. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I got the little magazines in here. So <clears throat> what I'm noticing is that I'm not successfully pulling the trigger without moving the gun right now. But at this range, wherever the dot is, and when I slow down, it looks like wherever the dot is, that's where the round is impacting at least at seven yards. So it seems to be pretty well right on for 180 grain ammo. Now, when I get my reloads up, them going faster and being lighter, I don't know how that's going to work. But I am, these are still the polymer sights. I was supposed to get my steel sights in today. Didn't end up getting them in because I had them sent to my address. <laughs> instead of having it sent to my mailbox so if that makes any sense to you guys who actually have PO boxes but anyways it's mail is undeliverable out here this is just a billing address if anything so with all that said let's go ahead and get that last mag and uh, then load up the last tin try to do headshots Yeah, I know it's not going to lock like this with it locked back. I don't care. But, eh, I guess I could just let it go. Practice with the holster as much as I can. I did a lot of dry reps yesterday, you know, with my new ELMS, my G-Sight uh, laser. And 
yeah, that probably didn't help things that I was doing constant repetitions didn't help my forearm out uh, that much. Plus, I was cutting wood this morning. So if you're constantly practicing, doing dry fire practice, you need to be aware that you need to be nice to your forearms or at least nice to your hands. You know, soak them in warm water, ice them. You know, take care of these little buggers because, yeah, they do all the work. So it's dialing in. I'm a bit slow, but you know, whatever. You gotta start somewhere, right? Okay, so what I'm failing to do is I'm failing to actually present and uh, fire at the apex. So I need to work on that. It's explode out of the holster and then slow down on the presentation for an accurate shot instead of casting out and then trying to find out what's going on up there. That's a bit better. You know, it's a little bit odd not having to decock anything. Not really odd, but it's different, but it's not like something I have to consciously do. I, I spend enough time just getting ready with this gun that it's, uh, it's doing all right for me. So I'm gonna try to aim for a place that I haven't hit on the steel target. It's shotgunned all over the place right now just because I was trying to find out where my sights were hitting. So. <laughs> And last one. Yeah, that sight was off, so I was like up and left. It was, that was terrible. But, yep, I just got some stuff to work on. This thing has not been lubricated. It has not been cleaned out of the box. And that's not like, oh, I'm testing if it's reliable or not. I mean, I just, I'm not the same person that I used to be as far as like being diligent about cleaning it every time. I mean, you go through a lot of products and with the products I use, like Slip 2000, FUBAR CLP, you know, uh, uh, hell, even if you use Break Free CLP, the more you use it, the more it uh, conditions the metal to where everything will pretty much just wipe off after, you know, a few hundred rounds and it, it cleans a lot better over time. So <clears throat> anyways. My plan with this gun is basically to just use it with everything, as I noted in my last video, but that's the first 50 rounds, and I mean, I guess it's okay for me being on a on a rest day and just itching to kind of see how this thing does with me. Uh, probably going to hurt a little bit more if I shoot my reload, so I'll probably have to, you know, tone down the amount that I'm um, putting through my reloads as far as, like, the powder charges go. But with all that said, I, I like the gun so far. I'm just waiting for those steel sights to come in. I had to order directly from Glock. And if you're going to order sights, do it from Glock. Uh, like the steel sights anyways, or even the night sights. The night sights are like $30 a piece, like front and rear. Instead of paying somebody like 80 bucks or 70 or 80 bucks, It's a lot cheaper. So uh, with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and leave a comment below and uh, let me know what you feel about my betrayal. So <laughs> anyways... Uh, Thanks a lot for watching, and you guys have a good one.